The history of the automobile industry is full of exciting experiments, and this does not necessarily apply to light vehicles. The evolution of trucks proceeded much quieter and smoother, but there were also extremely bright specimens in it, completely out of the general mass. One such example is a 1964 Ford prototype. In the wake of America's fascination with space and futurism, Ford unveiled its most striking concept truck in 1964 of course, with a gas turbine engine. In the 50s and 60s, all three American auto giants Chrysler, GM and Ford were developing gas turbine cars, and Henry Ford's company was definitely not among the laggards. Officially, the prototype was called the Ford gas turbine truck, but everyone, including representatives of the company, called the big red truck. Why red, we think, does not need an explanation, but the epithet big will be illustrated for clarity. Together with two Fruhoff trailers, the length of the road train was almost 30 meters, and its height reached 4 meters a full-fledged one-story house. Big Red made his official debut at the World Fair in New York, before that he made a tour across the country from coast to coast. During the tests, the truck proved to be relatively efficient, showing fuel consumption of 100 liters per 100 kilometers. The result, it would seem, is not very outstanding, but thanks to the tanks, whose total capacity was 1,000 liters, Big Red had a solid autonomy. Well, by the standards of a gas turbine truck. Its towing power turned out to be no less impressive a fully loaded road train, whose mass was 77 tons, could reach speeds of up to 115 kilometers per hour. But this is if all 600 forces of a gas turbine engine were involved, which had a complex two-turbine system. Unlike the GM Bison, the turbos on the Ford truck had the same power and could be activated at the push of a button. Part of the power of both units was spent on additional needs, cooling refrigerators, air conditioning, etc. The big red body was made of steel, and the lining of the upper part, in which the driver's cab was located, was made of fiberglass. With special skirts on the sides of the cab, Ford engineers were able to overcome the high-speed airflow disturbance, which significantly improved the truck's streamlining and fuel efficiency. By the way, the upper part with the cab was on a pneumatic cushion many years before Renault Magnum and MAZ Perestroika. The front wheels of the truck were attached to telescopic shock absorbers, which was a novelty in those years, and the braking system had an unusual protection if the air pressure in the system was below normal, the wheels were blocked and did not allow the truck to go on a trip. Equally interesting was the Big Red's interior, which towered a good two meters above the ground. To get into the cabin, the driver had to turn a special lever, after which the pneumatic actuator opened the door, and the electric actuator extended the stairs to the ground. Since the ceiling was almost two meters high, it was possible to walk in full height in the cockpit. Another innovation was the flat floor, the door was closed with a button on the panel, so that the driver did not have to reach out. The Big Red's visibility was first-class panoramic glazing allowed you to see the entire road in front of you. In front of the driver is a steering wheel and several control devices to monitor the condition of the turbines. The traditional gear lever is not visible as an Allison 5-speed automatic transmission was installed here. For relaxation, the truck had everything you could wish for, a water cooler, a mini fridge, a microwave oven, a wash basin with hot and cold water, even a small toilet. Opposite the partner's chair was a TV, the picture from which was not visible to the driver in general, every conceivable benefit of civilization that was only available in 1964 was present on board the Big Red. The reasons why the truck never went into production were the same as in the case of GM Bison and Chevrolet Turbo Titan III, increased environmental standards, high cost of construction and problems with certification of gas turbine engines in different states. The cost of this car can only be guessed at. Part of Big Red. It was designed and built by the company's research engineers under contract with the United States Navy on a joint Army-Navy program as an all-purpose gas turbine power. The General Motors Bison gas turbine freight hauler displayed at the 1964 World's Fair in New York was designed with grand plans, aerodynamic and fuel efficiency not the least among them. It was touted as being capable of handling present-day semi-trailers, with an adapter, in Overdrive's August cover story that year. Part of GM's Futurama exhibit, the prototype's cab had seating for two ahead of the engine and wheels. Drivers would have entered the sleekly sloped cab through a forward-tilting canopy, and a step that folded down as the canopy opened. Truckers would have steered using two coupled hand grips on a console extending over the driver's lap. 
The futuristic-looking truck never made it to market, although its power source, the GT309 with two turbines of 280 HP and 720 HP, powered GM's Turbo Cruisers 2 and 3, Rapid Transit Experimental, RTX, and the 1969 GMC Astro 95 turbine. Some of the early gas turbine prototypes, such as Max, contributed to Detroit Diesel DD-15S turbo compounding turbine of today, says Overdrive's technical editor John Baxter. The gas turbines in the 70s and early 80s used far too much fuel, but were powerful, gave out low emissions and ran on almost any form of petroleum, Baxter says. The Bison had a trailer lock and four steering options that provided exceptional maneuverability in urban environments and at cargo terminals. Somewhere, but in the United States, the 1960s are remembered with special nostalgia, electricity and gasoline were cheap, cars were big, and there were fewer worries. In those years, America decided to develop the aerospace and military industries, and this had a strong impact on other areas of life. It was then that automakers made a sharp leap in technology and design of internal combustion engines, and then turned their eyes to gas turbine power plants. On this wave of passion for space, the Chevrolet Turbo Titan III appeared. Chevrolet started building a gas turbine engine back in the early 1950s and, imagine, was not a pioneer Chrysler was testing the waters in this field even before World War II. The advantages of such motors were mass, high traction from the bottom, fewer moving elements, and less frequent repair and maintenance, compact size, as well as a huge amount of thermal energy that could be used, for example, to heat the passenger compartment in winter. This is precisely what was guided by Chevrolet when they supplied the GT309 gas turbine engine to the Turbo Titan III. The three in the name appeared for a reason two early prototypes of the truck were built, but both of them turned out to be not very successful. But the third came out on a feast for the eyes, together with a custom semi-trailer Chevrolet Turbo Titan III stretched 15 meters in length, and the total mass of the road train was 35 tons. The Turbo Titan III's cabin also had a lot to see. For example, two steering discs. In fact, it could have been one, just the system was duplicated in case of failure of one of the discs. The panel was tilted for greater driver comfort. In addition, there were aircraft-style seats with an integrated headrest, as well as an FM radio and a telephone. And all this in 1965. At the same time, the Turbo Titan III had every chance of becoming a serial Chevrolet for the sake of its own prestige could afford to produce an expensive truck with a gas turbine engine that is difficult to manufacture. But in 1970, the United States introduced restrictions on emissions of harmful substances, and it turned out that it was too difficult to adapt a car with such an engine to these standards. The project was frozen until better times. Which, alas, never came.